Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Christina, and welcome to SONA's March webinar, Frontline Flexibility. Thank you for joining us. For those who are here for the first time, welcome. We are SONA, the next generation workforce management software built to make a genuine difference in the lives of frontline workers everywhere. We work with customers like Exclusive Collection, Glen Eagles, United Response, Community Integrated Care, Yorkshire Care, and many more. Thank you all for sending us your questions before the webinar. We had quite a few of them. Uh, so I'm glad to see that this is a topic that really resonates. We've tried to work everyone's questions into the script today, but please make use of the chat to interact with our lovely guests. Um, like I said, the chat function is available to everyone. The Sona team is going to be in the chat to answer your questions as well. So we encourage everyone to comment, share your experience, agree or disagree with us, of course. And uh, we'll also be posting a poll about halfway through the webinar, so keep an eye out for that. The webinar is going to be recorded. We'll be sending the recording afterwards, so don't worry if you need to drop out early. Thank you for joining in the first place. And finally, the last boring bit of intro. All views expressed today in, in the webinar and presentation reflect only the speaker's views and not the wider views of their employer or organization. So without further ado, I'm going to let Karina take over from here with a quick introduction. Uh, thanks, Christina. Um, hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. Clearly, I'm not Paul. I know you were expecting Paul, but um, you'll have to make do with me today. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all well and um, looking forward to the Easter weekend. Um, do, you, do any of you have any good plans? I've already been stocking up on the chocolate, um, which I know goes quite well with wine. So um, that's what I'll be doing. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that we know that the audience is predominantly from social care. Um, and we're gonna talk today Richard and I about the frontline sector in general and we are going to bring in some hospitality data because what we've learned I think over you know over the time that we've been working with care and hospitality is that we do believe the two sectors can kind of inspire each other to perhaps think outside of the box lots of crossover in terms of staff or teams switching between the two sectors um, as we've discovered through our, the big shuffle um, exercises that we've done. So I think, yeah, just to, just to say that. So um, I'm Karina. I'm the VP of Productivity Solutions at Sona. And I've been working in the industry, the hospitality industry, actually. So either in or with um, for my whole career. So that is over 20 years now, which is uh, always nice to get out. Um, and I've been looking at like, yes, that frontline workforce, how to drive productivity. But, you know, productivity is an interesting word. And um, it's really about like, how do you match demand to your teams, but also how do you engage those teams in that exercise? Um, how do you make sure that you have that have a really nice relationship between the needs of the frontline team the needs of the business and actually managing all of those um competing needs um at all at once so that's me but over to you richard to thanks. introduce yourself thanks karina um hi I'm, I'm richard um really pleased to be here today um, i'm the commercial director of recruit genie um, an applicant tracking system um, if I give you a bit of my background as well, I'm like Karina, I've been in hospitality over 20 years as well. And it's it's um, it's it's hard to say when you, you look at two decades going back. But my background <laughs> has really been in talent acquisition and, and recruitment. Um, I started after coming to Edinburgh, you probably guess from my accent, I'm based up here in Edinburgh. Um, it's a bit wet today. Um, we I <laughs> came up here for university, fell into hospitality, worked all the way through hospitality in my years of studying came into um, the talent acquisition piece in 2004 um, and that was within the agency network, the agency sector. Um, I've recruited across perm recruitment, um, every discipline of, of hospitality, retail and some care um, all the way through until round about 2017 um, where the advances of technology, um, we took a leap of faith and we uh, was one of the founding members of Recruit Genie. Um, Recruit Genie was, was aimed at, at being used across retail, hospitality and care. Um, we've got people using across all the way and it, it really tries to automate um, 
and, 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 and take away all those admin processes of, of talent acquisition. Um, so we allow users to, to request vacancies, we pass them through authorization routes, we post them to Indeed, we then take all the response, automate the emails and the SMSs so that you can get to the candidates as quickly as possible. And then we automate those onboarding documents and digitally sign them. Um, and once we get all that data back, we then pass it over to the good people of Sona who then go forward with, with that data. Um, so we've seen loads of changes over over that, that um that 20 year period um recruit genies currently used in three and a half thousand um locations um most of those are hotels restaurants bars but we do have a couple of hundred care homes as well um using the platform so yeah as Karina says hospitality is very similar to care um i, I think when i started off in hospitality we took a lot of direction from retail um retail obviously directed the hospitality sectors and some of their processes and procedures and hopefully hospitality and care can can start inspiring each other to move through in their processes so that's my background and my lights have just gone off yeah. the, oh right Sorry yeah. about if, if, I, if, if i move every so often it's just to switch the lights back on <laughs> yeah. um thanks richard that's brilliant and um i'm sure the audience will be delighted to hear all your insights as we go through go, go through the course of the session so let's you know talk about that flexibility part um as Richard and I mentioned, we've all been in the industry a while now. Uh, so what sort of changed in the last five to 10 years or so? Um, I don't know what you, what everybody on the call thinks about that, but are new joiners expectations different now? Um, what do you all think? And I'll come to Richard in a moment, but you know, if I just think about what, what I've experienced, I suppose, or seen and heard, is we've certainly got that kind of working from home <laughs> becoming the norm for many desk bound jobs. And I think sometimes there might be an assumption that that's the only way to drive or to have flexibility or certainly that level of flexibility. And of course, most frontline professionals, they don't have that option. I also think people are looking for more control over how and when they work. You know, if I think back to getting my first job for for it. And that was in, in you know, frontline hospitality. Um, I just remember going in and you talk to the employer about what what's the job and they tell you when and they tell you where and you say, great. Um, and there wasn't, I, d I don't think there was a feeling of room for negotiation. I think the workforce now is more empowered to say what they'd like when they want to work. Um, and perhaps that, that 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 should be a good thing, right? Because it's it, there's more transparency there, so you really do create a sense of uh, everyone's on the same page about what we agreed, and there's no kind of um, there should then as you execute against those agreements, it sh it should be clearer, and there should be more clarity, and perhaps that drives retention. Um, now, clearly, we think that technology can play a part in helping to meet those new needs, because I think with driving flexibility or trying to give people more control and flexibility, then you, you kind of need technology to help you manage that given the, the, the um, demands of the day to day. And we'll talk more about that as we go through the session. But, you know, if, if we look at what what's the frontline workforce saying, so we surveyed leavers from the health and social care sector two years in a row, both in the big exit 2022 and the big reshuffle 2023. Um, so we surveyed a thousand health and so social care leavers and once pay was excluded, more the, the thing they came back and said was that more flexible work was it was always in the top three reasons to try something new. So flexibility and work life balance were prioritized even over opportunities to progress, particularly among the over 35s. And that same study, um, when applied to the hospitality industry, it was 38% of respondents said better work-life balance, which flexibility, of course, contributes greatly to, is what motivated them to choose a new job. Um, so, yeah, so interesting, really. And Richard, I'm sure you've got some thoughts around that how flexibility has changed in the last five to 10 years and that question of what are the expectations of new joiners? Yeah, absolutely. And I think 
if if, if we were to look back over, if you go back longer than five years, Karina, we go back to, to twenty yeah. years. Yeah. I think I think some of the practices within within care and and hospitality definitely were, were a little bit a little bit back in, in the time. You know, there was no flexibility back twenty years ago, yeah. and we had practices that, that that maybe were questionable. You know, if you look at the a chef doing sixteen hours over a split shift, um, it, it, it seems ridiculous now to to ask somebody to to do that. We 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 had a lot of of reaction to to business changes and and that meant that maybe employees were doing closing shifts and they were doing opening shifts the next day so there was there, there was no time to recover um the, the rotoring systems were were done maybe on on or maybe they were manually done or they were definitely done on spreadsheets on my day um and they, they it wasn't the most exciting of jobs for the, ge- the general managers to do so these were always yeah. left to the last minute they were, they were put up at the last minute and they were changed frequently so trying to plan yeah any life around those conditions were, were, were very difficult. Um, but I think, you know, that going back to 2019, five years ago, it, it, there was a hunger to change. And I think that was really forced on by the pandemic. Um, mm, if I look at my yeah. sector, hospitality was the first sector to close um, when we had that Boris Johnson's announcement in, in March 2021, I think it was, wasn't it? So so yeah. hospitality closed overnight um, and, and it was the last to open. It, it, hospitality didn't open again until everybody else had opened. Um, and it was frequently closed. So we lost a lot of, of, of skills or a lot of, a lot of employees through the, the deployment into retail, into care. I'm sure a lot went into care. And that's really forced yeah. hospitality to, 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 to really amend its, its ways. And I think those ways were, were being introduced in 2019. Um, to drive. So I certainly think there's been a, a real focus since the pandemic on trying to bring in more flexibility, um, bring in a work-life balance. There's been a key focus on wellness of, of staff to make sure they've got the work right working environment. Um, th- th- there's been a, a, a great introduction into some some tech, as, as we'll speak later on, um, which has allowed those changes to evolve and, and change. Yeah. Uh, and, and the retention piece as well comes from if you've got the, work, um, the right working environment, um, retention goes hand in hand with with those but we have to remember you're right you know flexibility isn't always about nine to five um if, if you look at some of the diverse backgrounds of people that work in care and hospitality they could be people with family commitments they could be people that are traveling students people that are operating two jobs and i think we have such a a, a positive um environment in that because we spread our hours over a longer period than nine to five we can offer flexibility and that might be night shifts there might be late shifts there might be morning shifts uh, i know when i was studying in, hosp- uh, in, in university if i had a 95 job i wasn't going to be able to study uh, in university That's but right. because hospitality yeah. gives you that flexibility so i think we need to look at flexibility in a way where it's not just about that hybrid model of working from home it, it allows you no. to to travel it allows you to study it allows you to have those second jobs and allows you to work around childcare. Yeah, uh, Richard, I couldn't agree more with actually all of your points. <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, if we really were to define what flexibility looks like on the front line, I think then we can touch on some of those things that you mentioned there, which is flexible working hours. Yeah, it's not just about, oh, I can work from home and that that's how you that's that's the only way to um, maximize your flexibility. So whether it's can condensed hours, part-time, as you said, Richard, night shifts, you know, what people tell us when we when we go and talk to them is that many of them do want more choice around when and how often they work. Um, flexibility can mean, and I think this is what you were touching on, that work fits around other important commitments. Now, that could be university, it could be childcare, etc., um, and that keep, I think that that then in turn keeps people in the job for longer. Um, then that the Richard, you talked about it as well. That kind of when do I get my schedule? So we people are still saying so. Almost twenty five percent of care professionals say that they get their schedule less than a week in advance. So of course, sharing schedules earlier improves work-life balance, allowing people to plan their commute, their childcare, and their personal lives. Um, and uh, you know, tech can play a, a part. Tech can definitely play a part in that, in helping those frontline managers to get those schedules out earlier by having tech that supports them in doing that. Um, and the ability to pop, to pick up and swap shifts easily. That was another one. So empowering your people to pick up and swap shifts on their terms, or kind of increasing their sense of autonomy, uh, autonomy at work. Um, going back to that, how do I give 
my teams more a sense of control, a sense of flexibility, whilst also making sure that 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 works for the business and for the the, the people that um, those businesses are serving. It also gives them the freedom to work over time if you're able to a, a, um, adopt those that that part the parts of the technology that allows you to communicate over time to people kind of in the moment on the go um, and so they can earn more when it suits them um, and when it suits suits the the workplace and then flexible payroll so as well as the option to pick up extra shifts when necessary i think there's a huge movement towards you know giving employees access to th to that that earned wage um, when as and when they want it and that's available through many of those earned uh, wage access schemes and and technology is providing the ability um, for people to do that i don't know richard have you got anything more to add to that yeah I, I, absolutely Karina. i think you know i, I certainly think the, the move to the flexibility and, and, and the, the work-life balance side is 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 key in in, in both sectors um you know we, we are seeing um employees now i think it's it's, it's telling the story isn't it? it's having the, the ability to attract individuals into your, your organization by offering the, the, the flexibility and the the work-life balance um I, I think both sectors operate such a diverse background it's understanding who's in your organization and what their requirements are um from, from that side and you know we, we sit on 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 um, webinars like this and it's all it's all very easy isn't it the, the utopia would be to offer yeah. all your full all your full time is 80 percent of their their hours scheduling and give them 20 percent flexibility to swap and change to coincide with the work-life balance but it's so difficult it's so difficult for yeah. for organizations that the nature of of care and hospitality is so fluid things change on a regular basis um, and i think I think it's difficult without the tools to to, to be able to react and plan. Um, but you know, I, I, as you've said, the, the introduction of platforms allow you to 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 harness the data. If that's from your your, your booking systems, your report systems, or or or, or, or for your forecasts, and, and think when do I need the workforce management in in place? And if that can become easier, you know, the, 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 we are seeing in 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 hospitality and and retail that rotors are done four weeks in advance on a norm now. Because um, it's so easy to, yeah. to develop, it's not that task that, that hiring managers had maybe twenty years ago when it was done on a on a piece of paper, and, and it was so taxing to get your head and so time consuming as well. If it's simple, if it's straightforward, you've got the data in front of you, you can react to it and you can change and tweak it. I think it, it becomes a lot easier to plan ahead, uh, and by planning ahead, you give your team members that opportunity to, for them to structure their lives around the work, the the work life balance, um, and it's a great it's, it's a it's a great positive. Yes, that's yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I think that's, you know, really fair to say that it's not just like, grab a few tools and off you go. And suddenly, you know, the workforce is more flexible and everyone's happy. It, it, it's a lot of work, isn't it, Richard, to embed those changes, even with the help of, of, um, of technology, really. And so I guess, if we think about, you know, that flexibility is what everybody wants, it's on everybody's agenda. I mean, that's what we're here to talk about today. But what, you know, what do you see as the three kind of greatest challenges around offering increased flexibility uh, related benefits? I think, I think if you look at the sectors in hospitality and, 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 and care, um, since I've been in them maybe 20 years ago, there's always been a fear of, of changing and um, there's always been a an attitude maybe that we haven't had processes and procedures or, or technology in place up to this point why, why would we need we need it now um and that can sometimes be a barrier um as well we have we have seen it with recruit genie as well the perception of cost as well um you know yeah there's, there's some great platforms out there can if you if you Go back to 1990 or 2000, and, and and you were looking at the functionality that Sonar offer, uh, and you were going to contact Oracle about putting that together. You'd be talking hundreds of thousands of pounds to to have that that made. Whereas there's so many providers out there now that that, that can provide enterprise models that are are really cost effective. They can they can they can have this functionality um, around there. So we see maybe the the fear of change, the fear of of implementing new yeah. procedures, the, the 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 cost element. People still perceive tech to be expensive. We're not for the return of investment, I don't see it as any more 
um, expensive. Um, and then it's the time. It's the time of being able to yeah. implement these, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's everybody wants to do it. Um, we've all been in that position where you've, you've, you know, you get to a point where you need to bring a new member of the team in, but you have to invest in the training. You have to invest the time to induct that person into the team, and that's the same with the platform. Um, I, I think there's an element of fear that it's going to take a long time to to to, to bed in and and and, and to come in. Um, but I, I think I think moving forward, there is a real hunger out there. We, we see it through our customers. We see it through all the sectors that there is a bit of a hunger to catch up, to um, to, to 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 bring care and hospitality back up to to technology led. And, and if you look at call centres, we've had technology and call centres sales. It's been all over sales for for, yeah. for decades. We're just playing a bit of catch up now, and I, I see there's a, there's a hunger for that to to happen. But I think. It has to be the, the organisation have to select the right platform that suits them. And I think if you can get a platform that is flexible that around current process and procedures, that can sometimes break the barriers a little bit. Um, but there is a little bit of resistance. And I, I, I would say it's a fear. It's a fear of the unknown, maybe. Yes, that's right. Yeah. No, I think that's the bit that that is probably the single biggest challenge, right? That fear of change. Um, and the uh, one of the other things that I would bring into like, what what are the challenges to getting it, you know, making sure if you do select a partner, how do you maximise, as you say, Richard, that return on investment? And that's where my, um, the bit that I'm quite passionate about, and that's the science behind, like, if you, if people say, well, we, as a workforce, we want to feel that our working lives are more flexible. And I think that flexibility is actually about, a, is more a, you know, you can you can um, summarize it in a feeling of control. Well, actually, the business want that feeling too. So I think you can you can you can ma match those. But I do believe that in order to do that well, you have to first know like what's the blueprint for my business. So what does do, like ha what kind of workforce do I actually need over the the weeks and months of a 52, 52 week year. And of course those change and that the levels of change between care and hospitality, perhaps they're different in terms of the fluctuations, but it is a moving feat. Um, and of course also things change quite rapidly around who's in my workforce, et cetera. But often when I've been implementing this type of technology with businesses, there, you know, you can put in a, a great system. It could forecast really well for you. It could even, you know, deploy your labour for you. And at, at Sona, that's that's what we're we're working on. And it can tell you, you know, on the basis of of activity or revenue, how many people do you need X, Y, Z. But if your workforce doesn't match to that demand, then you will. It will be tricky to to still to give everybody what they want while still meeting the demands of the business. So I think you have, my thing is like, start there. Like what, what should our workforce model look like in order to meet the demands? And then how do we recruit to that? And I guess Richard, that's where you can help. <laughs> um, and then I deploy to that and then I can insert the, the shift swapping, the sending out shifts, if I if I need more workforce, but I've got I've got part timers and therefore I can flex up to that. But I've also got my core, my full timers who, you know, some people they want to just work when they want to work and, and there's always going to be demand for that. So that kind of core plus more um, plus your very flexible workforce at the, uh, sitting at the bottom of that that schedule. Um, yeah, so don't know, Richard, anything else to add on, on that point there around that kind of having a blueprint and then recruiting for that blueprint and how tech can help with that? Yeah, I, I think um, the, the, the recruitment piece is competitive uh, and, and there has been. I think it's slowly coming back now um, since since we, we've left the pandemic um, and, and there's still, I think there's care and, and, and hospitality are attracting a good range, but they're attracting them through organisations shouting about being able to have this flexibility piece um, and being able to offer the opportunity to, to swap shifts, to fit shifts around 
work-life balance or other commitments. Um, I, I think that's what's attracted people in uh, into the industry. Uh, it's always going to be tough. Uh, it's always going to be tough. You know, a change in the weather forecast can suddenly throw your, yeah. your motors upside yeah. down. Can't uh, you know people phoning in sick the day before? It, yeah. it's always going to be an element of, of flexibility. But I think people appreciate that that element is always going to be there it's how we manage it um, and as you say it's yes. through those solutions that that can help us predict but also plan ahead um, and once once we we have planned ahead if things change the weather forecast change we can react very quickly uh, because we we have the tools at hand to, to do it and um, the, the recruitment piece i'll come on to maybe a bit later on but it, yes. it, it, it's evolved massively since going back to my days. I'm, I'm maybe going off on a tangent here. 2007, we had email, <laughs> but but it wasn't always used. Karina, we, we would be sending CVs via fax half the time, and yeah, you would wait. Yeah, you'd wait until you'd wait until Thursdays to put your adverts in the local paper, um, and they were lineage adverts. You know, now if you look at it evolving in a way, and and uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is that workforce management is evolved in this way as well. Um, you know, we now have yeah. ATS systems. ATS systems really, I don't think invented apart from. You know, no. recruitment agencies back in 20, 2004. Um, indeed, was a, a flicker. You know, job boards weren't always been there. But if you, if you roll it on now, we've got national job boards, international job boards. We've got ways of communicating yeah. within seconds. Uh, we've got this social media now um, that everybody's becoming ultra tr transparent. Um, you can build a, an environment on, on TikTok. You can be on YouTube. Um, we've seen brands build brands on, on social media. Um, Brands to, to employ, my lights back on. Um, so 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 it's changed it's changed massively. And my point is that I f think workforce management is going through this journey as well. Um, it's 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 maybe not been twenty years in the making, but it's certainly th there's developments that have, have shifted massively. And I think the space will sh will continue to shift. Yeah. Oh, I completely agree with that actually. And yeah, you're right. Workforce management tech. You know, I think we're getting into this what's the next generation actually of workforce management tech and um, if we think that flexibility on the front line is dependent on having the right tech and employee like as well as employee buy-in and we start with what tech do you need to deliver that um, I think you get into into what you're talking about there Richard which is things that are available now like digital scheduling so as you say that Go, moving away from, you know, Excel spreadsheets, pen and paper as it was, you know, um, a little bit more of, a, you know, oh, but maybe some people are still doing that. Um, but certainly that Excel, because with the digital scheduling, then, you know, you have an, the organization then has visibility of how the, how the business is scheduling. So I think helps, you know, if you've got multiple businesses scheduling all every week, all at the same time, like, how do you leverage the information in those schedules to make more strategic decisions. Well, you can certainly do that once you have that digital scheduling in place. Um, and then the shift marketplace for booking overtime, you know, as I think we both touched on, you know, in years gone by, and it probably still happens, you know, there's pieces of paper, there's diaries that people are writing, I, you know, have you got any overtime or here's when I can and can't work, you know, outside of the agreed shifts that that or the agreements that you've made with them. But now technology can actually take care of that. So you can get rid of all that, <laughs> um, all that uh, post-it notes and therefore mistakes, things not seen, etc., and replace it with technology. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, implementation of that technology so that you are um, you're not lo you're not losing control over how people are managing their schedules. Um, employee apps, of course, so that that you know instant communication. Again, like there's a whole section of the workforce that that's how they um, communicate nowadays. I actually had a phone call with somebody this morning, and that person told me that they they were surprised that I picked up the phone to them. Um, and they said, you know, phone calls are, are a bit disturbing. And, uh, you know, I understood that because, of course, we're communicating much, much more um, through devices now. And so I think the frontline teams are expecting to see those devices in the workplaces that they go into and to be able to communicate with their workplace through their mobile phones. But, of course, we can't um, ignore 
people who don't want to communicate in that way. And so the good news is that the technology is flexible and they and you can still they can still do it on, on a desktop or a tablet within the organization. Or, you know, for those people that don't want to engage in that at all, then of course you can still um, deliver through those other methods, but you're massively reducing the reliance on that by introducing tech. And of course, payroll solutions, you know, why are we all um, sitting here today? Why do we all go to work? Well, that's, you know, to be recompensed um, for, the, for it. And, you know, there's passion and we all love it, but yes, it, the most one of the most important things is is paying people and getting that right and um, I personally love the the introduction of more tools that allow people to earn their wages as you know to draw down sorry on their earned wages as and when they want without disrupting you know what needs to be a more cyclical um, approach to actually processing payroll um, so I, I kind of I'm, I'm, I, I kind of love that, and then of course you've got Richard, Richard, and um, those brilliant ATS solutions, which are um, there's. I guess you're seeing more and more demand for those, Richard, in recent times. Yeah, I, I think so, and, and yeah, I think with, with the applicant tracking systems, it's it, it's been able to have a reach out there. Um, I, I think. Uh, it goes in cycles. We, we, in my start my recruitment career, we were putting up barriers so that people had to write offer letters. They were, they were writing them covering letters, sorry, and they were sending in some CVs by post and what have you. We, we've broken all those barriers down now, Karina. So, um, you know, you talk about communication there. We, we have people applying for jobs on WhatsApp. Simply, it's a, it's a QR yeah. code you scan in, in a location, a care home, or, or where it might be, and we yeah. send out we send out seven messages um, that we convert those messages. We send them out by tech, by WhatsApp. We convert those responses into a CV, and that's your application. So we're, we're trying to break down as many barriers as we can to capture applications. Um, now in London, that might not be too much of a problem, but if if we're up in in, in Scotland here, where we don't have the same yeah. population, it's trying to capture the volume. Uh, but then when we get the volume, it's it's about then looking at the volume and seeing well who's the best one from that volume and, and trying to look for keywords, look at skill sets, look at who is close, who, who, who's flexible um, and get the, the hiring manager the right CV. But you make some very good points. Um, I think if not, not just tech, when we're talking about applicant tracking system or workflow management, it's it's how computers have evolved. You know, desktops mm. have now, they, they, they moved into laptops, laptops then moved into yeah. tablets, tablets have now mobile devices, smartphones can do everything a tablet can do. Um, so it allows us to communicate very effectively. Um, without having to to find a, a portal or a terminal and, and be able to to tap into it. Um, but I would say as well, you know, I'll tell you a, a, a funny story. Um, it, it has to be the right tech. There has to be the right tech for the organisation. Yeah. I remember presenting to a, a hotel up in the Scotland Scotland Highlands and they came down to Edinburgh, everything went well. They, they, they loved the product. They thought this is fantastic. We took the product up to the Highlands and we realised that they, they had nothing more than a dial-up network. Um, so yeah. to, to access a cloud-based <laughs> solution up in the Highlands when the internet was so poor was was going to be a major challenge. So we have to make sure that the tech, that if it's communication, if it's there's no point yeah. having communication apps if you've got no mobile phone sig signal, signal. There's no point having ATS systems that can't connect to the internet. So we have to make sure the tech is right for the organisation. Um, and then once we have the right tech, we then have to make sure that it's it's user friendly because from my experience, and I'm not technical in the slightest uh, the fact that i'm working in a in a, a technical company that provides software is is the biggest joke in my family because <laughs> when i came to do when i came to do a level com computing I, I don't think i even scored a d to be honest with you so i'm as technical as a was but when it comes but that's a good thing um because i come out of development yeah. meetings and i'm sure you do yourself and Sometimes a lot of it goes over my head, which is which is a bad sign because if it goes over my head, it'll go over the person who's using it as well. Because we're not all technicians when it comes to hospitality and, and care homes. So if it's a communication app, it's a workflow management, if it's an ATS, it has to be user friendly um, and it has to be intuitive so that it can be used um, to its to its best of its ability. Um, and that that would be to my key. I, I think one of the other things that we've noticed. Um, a little bit out with the, the recruitment, but more in the retention side, is some fantastic training providers out there that are offering yes, mod yeah. mo modular training um, through through um, tech solutions, which takes out that requirement to travel into classroom environments. And and, and, and some of the content is fantastic um, f from that side. And, and, and that's something that can give, the if the interface is right, it can give that, that employee a, a real boost um, and upskill them. Yeah, look, I, 
Yeah, that's that brings us on to it, the, the kind of interesting piece, I think, around, you know, what a, we've touched on it a little bit, both of us, I think, if we, as we've gone through the discussion, but that fear of change and how you overcome that and how training plays a part in that, as you were describing. Um, and so just to talk a little bit about how we've seen organizations overcome that. I mean, this is, another, aside from the kind of the science of, of scheduling workforce management and all, all of that, um, another thing that I'm really passionate about actually is how do you implement workforce management technology or any technology, right? To be honest, but you know, we are talking about frontline worker technology today. Um, in a way that is going is future proofing your business, but it's it doesn't feel like always the too hard box for everyone. And I think that starts with there's a maturity curve, I think, for every business. Like you have a a vision of what the future of your technology stack looks like as it pertains to workforce management and the objectives of putting that in, like the why are we putting this technology in? What do we expect the outcomes to be? And then there's where are you today? And I think where are you today helps can like really understanding that then you can go, you can think really carefully about how you go up that maturity curve because there's a lot that technology can do for you, but you don't have to do it all, you know, you don't have to do it all tomorrow. Um, and actually, I have, I've seen that, I've seen tech go in and everything goes in and actually it's too much change too quickly. And I think you can have, in, you can drive incremental benefits. And then the, uh, the other thing I, I did recently, well, everything seems recent to me these days, but it was probably a, a good few years ago now, but I, I implemented um, uh, a full stack workforce management technology platform, but I was on the side of the customer, uh, as in I was in the organization uh, working with a tech provider. And what they did brilliantly was they really helped, they didn't, they, they had some things that they wanted to achieve around productivity and yes, driving that flexibility, adding technology so that um, employees are, are having that more a greater sense of control, but with the managers really controlling how much control. <laughs> um, but they they started with like, why are we doing this? What's what is it? How are we going to do it? It was bite sized chunks. They had champion. They had champions from the the who's using the technology the most. Well, they should be your champ. You know, you should have a ten champions. Let's say, and they're they're influencing then the peer group. Also, testing and learning is really important. So you select your provider, but then you're in, in your within your implementation. You do test and learn, and then you show your work to the to the the rest of the team. So here's what we tested. Here's what we learned, and here's what we've changed about how we're going to implement and then the what's in it for them. And then it's still still tricky, right, to implement tech successfully um, over, over time. And then that, that training, a big piece for me is that, yes, you can you train people on how to use the technology, but actually you can use the technology to identify where the like short and longer term training needs are so that you're always doing that in the moment training like you're identifying through how the technology is used who and what parts of that technology need a, like a, a refresh and and richard is right there's some really great solutions that don't just um they they're, they're more than just putting together training uh training workshops and training people on certain things you can then go back and do bite-sized pieces of those and i think that lets you drive behavioral change incrementally so that your system and your people are actually working together um, because i have seen that bit where it's like well the system said x and it was wrong it, you know you shouldn't really be hearing that about technology it should be like i'm working with this technology and some of what it says is 
very, very correct. And some of it isn't, but I didn't expect it to always be correct, etc. So, um, yeah, I don't know what your experience of that is, Richard. Yeah, probably the same, Karina, to be honest. It's, it's, the, it's the biggest challenge, isn't it? It's the biggest hurdle to, to, to implement a, a system. Um, and, and what we have found is that I think implementing any system in, 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 in any sector is the same. I think it's, it's a great opportunity to review your current or internal processes and procedures. And, and, and what works well, what works doesn't work so well. And I think there's there's a danger of, as you say, you know, automation for automation's sake or tech for tech's sake. Um, where, where we have tried to come in is we have we have tried to work with as much of the current processes as we can, but just enhance them or yeah. automate them to take out that admin time, um, so that you know. Copy and pasting emails, we don't have to do because we'll do it for you. Send the text messages, you don't have to do because we'll do it for you. Um, Sending through CVs, you don't have to do because we'll do it for you. And that takes away all the mon monotonous jobs that cause, take so much time. Um, and I'll, I'll leave you with, with more time to do the good jobs that make a real effect on your business. Um, but I, I agree. I think it's, 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 very, it's very challenging to begin with. There's an element of, of a short-term pain to get the long-term results. Yeah. Yeah. But I think if you can keep as much consistent in your organisation with the with process and procedures, things that you're used to, things that your employees are used to doing, but enhance them through the tech um, and then slowly try to try to change things. We, we've been very lucky. We've worked with, um, in, in the early years, 2017, 2018, a, a couple of, of hotel groups that took the platform in and, and, and tweaked it and gave us the functionality that we, we are no <laughs> Einstein's or, or any, we haven't come up with any great ideas. It's been driven by the, the operators of the platform, um, yeah. which, which help us build the functionality. Um, but but we had a base that that, that that they could they could start with. Um, but you're absolutely right. And then there's the support. It's the it's the training. Uh, any organisation taking a tech product in, you have to be reliant on. If somebody's going to be on the end of a telephone call when you need them, somebody's going to be on the end of a, a support request when when it's when it's required. And and you have to walk through those first six months to make sure the system beds in. Because if it doesn't bed in, it just becomes redundant very quickly. Um, and that's the biggest danger. Um, but other than that, I, I, I agree with everything you've said, Karina. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess, I, I don't know, I don't think we've got only got a few minutes left, um, but there is one final question that we wanted to cover, and that's kind of around what we think is coming, uh, what, the, what the future of flexibility and care and hospitality looks like and what the three, what do we think is going to change in the ne over the next few years? And uh, I think if, you know, if I could talk about three things, I think there's this, um, I think the, co you know, the, the cost pressure around labor isn't going away, right? And so, how you mitigate against that? I don't, you know, I think it's more. There's a lot of talk about, you know, as the national minimum wage increases, what does that look like? How does that compare to managers' salaries, etc.? So it's not so much about we don't want the minimum wage to increase, but the the kind of dichotomy of those things starts to look quite interesting. And so, I think that that will drive a, a need to have. To, to be offering, to have more part-time opportunities um, available for people so that you really can manage that, that demand versus where I need people, you know, that kind of old right, right, right people, right place, right time. So I think there's going to be a lot of need to understand more fully, like from a scientific perspective, what does my workforce need to look like um, and then I think it, it kind of lines up with that, but upskilling, like a bit a greater em emphasis on upskilling and multifunctional roles. Um, and of course, that's not, um, you can't do that across all roles, but there are roles where if you, it, as you, as you're forced to adapt to the kind of changing needs of the consumer or operational needs, like businesses become they need to be more versatile, more adaptable. And so upskilling employees and developing them into multifunctional roles, I think, allows workers to perform a variety of tasks, different departments, different functions. Um, and that drives flexibility, I think, in turn. Of course, you know, technology, I think, is going to be, be at the forefront of the, the changes that are happening. I think that's in train, but um, we're going to see 
of course, you know, dare I say, it, advanced technologies, lots of AI, machine learning. Um, and I think that's going to accelerate over the next number of years. And I, I think it's, I think, Richard, you touched on that, you know, that kind of collaboration between the, um, the care sector, the hospitality sector and the tech sector. I think, let, let, you know, I'd love to see us really collaborating on what does that need to look like? We don't have all the answers. You have many of the answers out in your businesses. And so we need to be listening and using that, that what, what is actually brilliant technology and make sure that we use it brilliantly and, and, and not in any other way. Um, but uh, Richard, what, what do you think is coming? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just reiterate that collaboration piece. Um, Cranor as well. I think you know we've all got great expertise in, in certain sectors. By no means do I know anything about work, workforce management or, or or anything else. You know, so so it, it's 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 having the opportunity to to plug in um, and integrate solutions together so that you've got a one stop shop. Um, but the best the best in market um, across all those those means will, will help businesses thrive. I think certainly think flexibility. We still have a long way to, to go. I think we've, we've made great yeah. strides over the, the five years, but I think there's, there's further um, strides that, that, that both sectors can make on those. I think the, the wellness and work life will be there across all sectors. And, and I think hospitality and care are, are key in, in those ones, having the work the, work, the right environment for, for employees, the, the, the right tools for employees to, to, to manage wellness. Um, and, and we've seen that predominantly in hospitality with the number of, of hotel providers offering, you know, free, if not very much reduced sporting facilities or, or gym facilities yeah. or, or environments. That's a little bit more difficult to care, but we've seen that in care homes joining providers of benefits um, that, that can offer employees those, those as well. Um, I, I think the, 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 the adoption of tech technology will help both of those going forward. The one I would touch on as well is the storytelling aspect. And we've seen this yeah. go, go, going forward. I think when we've got all this good stuff happening within organisations, there's no point having it and not telling people about it. Um, and I think what we have seen in, in the recruitment side is it's not just about placing an advert. It's about telling people you have these solutions in place that they can swap shifts, they can request holidays, they, they can do things that are, are, are very quickly. Um, they have the flexibility, the, the wellness. And it's about building that that, that journey. Um, we have social media platforms now, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah. Um, there's been this podcast. I, I found out yesterday Marks and Spencer's and Next Have Podcasts where they go around employing different functions of all their organiz organization and, 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 and market it. So you really build a story of what it's like working within those environments. Uh, and I can see that being more and more uh, a recruit journey. We as part of the, the recruiting package, we build career sites. Um, we, we probably build more than 100 career sites a year. And when we first started seven years ago, we, we were lucky if we got pictures of rooms. You know, we, we were building sites and we were getting pictures of bathrooms and toilets and, and restaurants <laughs> that were empty and all these ones, faces of, of, of properties. That slowly evolved into into team shots of people serving food and, yeah. and serving behind bars. But but it's come on again now. We, we've, we've seen so much video content now you know, testimonials of employees that have worked in the organisation saying what it's a, a day in their life always like. We, we, we see people that have developed, and let's be honest, hospitality and care, the, the barriers to entry are very, very, very minimal. Um, and that's, a, that's a, a huge positive because you can join either sectors if you have the right environment, the right development, you know, the right application, you can soon go from earning living wage to earning six-figure salaries very quickly. And, and there's very few industries out there that I know of that can do that. Yeah, I, I don't think there are many others, are there, Richard? You know, where you can join, join like on day one, earning an hourly wage, and in I, I think in like you know a matter of two years, you can be actually earning a very good salary with lots of responsibility and a and a pathway to more, right? Yeah. Um, without uh, actually any, like formal education, right? Some, Absolutely. Some, and, 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 you know, there's, there's probably a downside, switch my lights back on, there's probably a downside to <laughs> obviously any any industry that has a, a low level, uh, low barrier to entry, it, you're always going to be talking about minimum wage or, or, or living wage. Yeah. Um, and, and unless somebody wants to pay seven or, or eight pounds for a, a, a pint of beer or £25 pounds for a burger, that's never really going to change because you're always going to have that or, or twice the, the care. Of course, uh, yeah. but you're always going to have that barrier. But I think we can we can embrace it by 
by giving the platforms for, for individuals to grow and develop. And, and if you apply yourself and, you know, let's, let's be honest, hospitality, definitely retail, to an extent, was always a Saturday job, wasn't it? It's a job that you did when you were studying to do something else. But I have friends in the industry now who, who are, who are who have developed, have become GMs or, or directors, and and they've, they've made a fantastic career for themselves. Uh, and that's been yeah. been not on the back of a university degree or a, a qualification. It's been on application. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, that's what I. One of the things that I really love about the industry. But you're saying like, got to build those brands, right, to get that message out there, reach reach a lot of people, right. Absolutely. I, I don't think there's any point of doing it internally and not telling anybody about it. I, I would say, you know, and we see, you know, I, I look at adverts still when we, we look at the benefits section and you've still got, you know, we'll feed you of your own duty. We'll give you a uniform. Um, you know, but why are we not saying about, you know, we have the flexibility for you to request holidays, swap shifts. We have the we, we have the opportunities for you to develop. We have these development programmes in-house. We utilise this platform. Uh, why not shout about all of those things? Um, yeah. why, why not have testimonials that say this is what, somebody who joined the same role did in six months to a year further down the line uh, we're stuck in the ways of thinking that a benefit is a tangible bonus yes. or it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not it's about the growth and, and the development um, as well and we don't do enough of it but we're slowly seeing that coming coming through and it's not about building a brand it's building a brand of of choice for an employee um, so that people that's, say yeah i, I want to join it. us you know back in the yeah. day i remember when i was leaving school it was always the banks yeah, that obviously went a bit <laughs> wrong yeah. in, the, in the future but the banks were always the one that gave you a career for life weren't they? they were the ones that you would have a career yeah. for life uh, and, and and they must have built that through years of of, of branding that um but I, I think there's a lot to be done in that space i think it's and there's some great platforms out there that, that can help you yeah completely agree with that and um i think um we need to hand back to Christina, but Richard, I could talk to you all day actually. And um, thanks for the participation um, of the attendees in the room as well. Really good to have you all here. But um, I think something else happens now, like a demo. Christina, is that is that right? Yes. Or questions. Well, yeah. To Hemel <laughs> joining us. In the meantime, everyone, if you have any questions in the chat or anything we didn't manage to touch on, I think. Uh, 45, 50 minutes kind of fly by, but feel free to send us any questions. We're always prepping new sessions and there is Himmel, lovely. Thank you so much for joining us, Himmel. If you wanna chat a little bit about Sona. No, it's brilliant. Thank you, Christina. And thank you, Karina and Richard as well. Um, right, I will share my screen and let's go into a quick summary of Sona. So, uh, right, firstly, um, what we'll be talking about today is just a brief introduction to the Sona admin portal. So uh, there are two parts to the Sona system. There is the Sona admin portal. This is typically for managers or um, regional operations teams or head office teams who essentially need to be able to do a little bit of everything from a planning perspective. So potentially this is a view you need if you would build out the roster for your service, if you would post requirements for overtime shifts that need to be filled, uh, if you want to access your kind of HR or personnel inf file information, if you want to send messages to your teams, if you want to approve or view holiday entitlements, uh, and even to check in on the well-being of your teams. Uh, all of these things are within a kind of click of a button with the Sona admin portal. So typically this is something you would log into uh, using a web browser. So that means you might be on your laptop or your PC whilst you use this. Uh, part of the Sona system is also uh, something that you can access via tablets as well, which is something we were doing at Care Week last week as well. So it's quite a nice experience as well, kind of working. You can check in and out of your roster as well. Uh, Sona also has a app experience as well. So uh, it's something that you could uh, say is more focused on your frontline team. So essentially anyone who is working a shift based pattern would also want to interact with their roster and also typically would have a need to interact with things like uh, how they clock in and out of their shifts or complete timesheets, etc. You want that process to be as straightforward as it can be. Um, maybe you want to read the latest kind of newsfeed information that's been sent over to you from head office or from your management at your service or location. Um, and then obviously, critically, you probably want to book in a holiday and go away at some point as well. So Sony can give you all of this information at a click of a button. So the Sonar app can be downloaded onto um, 
your Apple device or your Android device via the uh, App Store and the Play Store, respectively. So the Sonar app can also function in what we call kiosk mode as well. So we have the ability to download this app onto a tablet type of device uh, and then kind of switch to kiosk management. And then potentially if somebody doesn't have their smartphone that day to clock in out of a shift, maybe they can do that using a worker login code that they have access to instead. Um, I'll spend a bit more time today on the app actually than we usually do, just to give a slightly different perspective. But I wanted to talk a bit about logging in and out of shift. So one of the things that Sonar is really focused on is building simple to use experiences for your frontline teams, but equally help you to kind of validate work to time properly as well. So in this instance, let's say I've just received an app notification to say time for me, Hamble, to clock in to a shift, uh, which is roughly right because I joined this uh, demonstration at about 12.50. What we need to do in Sonar is hit the in button and you see that little loading screen as well. So essentially, this is how Sonar can use um, geo, uh, geo location or geo tagging to essentially work out where the device is that's clocking into a shift versus where is the location of that shift. So. I am talking today from Essex, which is this little blue dot, uh, but the shift I was due to work is down here in the Chichester area. So essentially what we want to be able to do is make it as easy as possible to flag when things, uh, when unexpected things have taken place on a shift. So a good example would be I'm running five minutes late. Maybe that's because I've experienced transport issues. Maybe I've just forgotten to clock into my shift. Maybe I'm having some technical issues. All of these different options can be configured uh, directly in the Sonar system as well. So you can choose the options that are kind of valid and would fit with your current processes. So in this case, let's say I had some transport issues, I would click there. Uh, it's also asking me to explain why I wasn't near the location I'm supposed to be present at as well, which is um, an interesting dynamic because a question we're often asked is why would you allow somebody to clock in to a shift if uh, they were too far away from the uh, from the from the premises, let's say as well. And what we what we tend to say is that actually there there are always examples of why team members may or may not be where you expected them to be. And in, in the care sector, we know that often uh, staff can accompany people on visits uh, to uh, hospital appointments or GP appointments, or to kind of pick up groceries for their for their home or their service. So Sonar is designed to kind of facilitate those things and make sure that you're aware of what's happening, but equally to make sure those kinds of shifts have a a manager approval or validation process. So in this case, I'll say I was uh, 100 kilometers away because maybe I was an off-site training event. I click on that here. I can then confirm my clock in, and that's the entire process as well. So again, this kind of emphasizes our focus on simple experiences for team members. I've just kind of got in, clocked into my shift, even though it was a fairly complex uh, situation where I was slightly late for my shift, but I was also 100 kilometers away. There was no more than a few clicks of a button to actually complete that process. Now to kind of wrap up that process as well, once I've kind of finished my shift, I would just go back to the clock out button on the app. What I will point out here though, is that um, let's say there's a, another kind of complication. So I'm working on my shift and I've decided that actually I'm feeling unwell, so I need to leave early. Uh, I may have a conversation with my manager, I'd hit my clock out button and go through the same process essentially. So this time, and depending on your configuration, you may not want your team members to be able to self-certify as sick. Uh, you may decide that that's fine in certain situations. In this case, let's say we configure this to just show manager authorization. I, you can only leave shifts early if your manager authorizes you to do so. I then need to explain why I'm 100 kilometers away. Again, this could be because of the offsite training event that I am participating in. And if I wanted to add some free text information here, I could, in this case, I won't, but essentially this is how I can validate exactly what's happened with the shift. So I confirm my clock out there. Now, essentially from a team member perspective, that's about as complicated as it gets. You were a hundred kilometers away from where you were supposed to be. You clocked in too late, you clocked out too early and you were feeling sick, but it's no more than a few clicks of a button for that team member to finish that process. So it's a really easy process to use to kind of validate that work to time. And then from an admin portal perspective, if we refresh here, you'll be able to see that Sona will flag the shift to the relevant manager in real time. So if you now zoom in on the shift here, this is the one that I just clocked in and out of, you can see a little green flag has appeared against that shift. So essentially now it's about making the process for the manager who is approving these shifts uh, as simple as it possibly can be. So in this instance, let's click on the flag and let's process this pay query. Now, all of the information that was 
entered or submitted by the team member in the app and is now surfaced for the admin user. So I can see what's gone wrong. I, it was a shift that was clocked into six minutes late and not at the correct location. So there's a few flags here for me to go through and kind of approve as well. But that process is designed to be as straightforward as it can be. So my first flag is Hamel clocked in six minutes late. What would you like to do? So uh, potentially I would decide not to pay those six minutes. So maybe I change this pay variant to um, unpaid. Uh, if you have other pay variant types you'd like to have on the system, that will be configured for you. If we go to the second flag, it says, I wasn't where I was supposed to be for this shift. So again, maybe this is fine. Maybe it's paid at a training rate because it was for offsite training. Um, again, I could choose which of those variants to select. And then finally, the last flag says you clocked out too early. So again, I can now change this to sickness because I know that I spoke with this colleague and they mentioned that we needed to leave early because they weren't feeling well. So once that's saved, I close that here and you can see that that sickness is updated as needed. I will pause there for now. If you have any other questions about Sona, please do let us know. Otherwise, I hope that was useful. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for staying for the demo, and I hope you found this session useful. We are at the end of our time, so please feel free to write to us if you have any feedback. I'll be sending out the recordings um, today or tomorrow, and hope everyone enjoys the long weekend. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.